<clears throat> Good morning, my brothers and sisters. Back with another three-part series. And today's teaching will be the difference between the three heavens. The first heaven, where Christ dwells. The second heaven, where Antichrist dwells, the false Christ. And the third heaven, which is the flesh. I call it the physical dimension or the flesh um, and that's where the physical male and female is, the natural male and female. All right, let us get right into the teachings. John 4, 24, God is the spirit, and they that walk with him must walk with him in spirit and in truth. It's, it's always important to begin a teaching like that, to get you in that spiritual mindset. God is the spirit, and they that walk with him. Or, or, or worship him. Your walk, your worship, and your work, they're all one and the same. They that worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth. Now, worship is eternal. Worship is a state of living. It's living in the fruit of the spirit. We, we, we get up in spiritual worship. This flesh gets up. Worship takes this flesh up in worship. It lays it down at night in worship. So, we, we worship 24-7. It's, it's a state of living. It's an eternal state of living. 1 John 1, 5, God is light, and in him is no darkness at all. So we must walk in that spiritual light. We must walk in that eternal spiritual light. All right. Let's go to Ephesians 1, 3. Ephesians 1, 3 says that, Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who had blessed us with all spiritual blessings in the heavenly places. Ephesians 1, 3 is the first heaven. This is where the true Christ is. This is where the spiritual blessings are, in the first heaven. Now, the first heaven was the only heaven when we were all in the spirit, before we were put, put in the flesh. It was the first heaven. But when Satan and his angels rebelled against the Lord, when Satan and some of the angels rebelled against the Lord, sin cannot dwell in that first heaven. So he booted them out. He kicked them out and put them beneath the first heaven in which is called the second heaven, where Satan has already been judged to death under the law. And God made him the law of sin and death. Satan being sin, being the author of sin, he judged him to death. This is why he is the law of sin and death. When the Lord put him under the law of commandments, he judged him to death there. All right. He judged him to death there. So there became a second heaven. That's the second heaven. All right. But this is the first heaven where the spiritual blessings are. In Christ Jesus, who is the mind of God. Christ is the mind of God. He is the light of God. All right. There is no light outside of him. Let us go to Ephesians 6.12. <clears throat> Ephesians 6.12 says that, Ephesians 6.12 says, For we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities and powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. In high places, not the heavenly places. There's a difference between the heavenly places and the high places. The high places is where the religious are. That's where the religious minded are. That's where... Antichrist governs. Okay, this the 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 high places is where the spiritual curses are, but he hides those curses behind scripture, and unlawfully attaches financial and material provision to give you that deception that you're being prosperous, but your spirit is not fruitful because your spirit has not been born from above. It, it, your spirit has not been born back into the first heaven. It has, your, your spirit got to be born back into the spiritual blessings for you to distinguish the difference between 
prosperity and provision between the true Christ and the Antichrist. The Antichrist presents himself after a biblical fashion as the true Christ, but he's the false Christ. And he uses the letter unlawfully to keep you in biblical darkness and keep you in the deception of false prosperity. All right. What is biblical darkness? The Bible was given to the mind of the flesh while being dead in our sins and trespasses under the law of God in the spirit. So we were in the we were in darkness in the mind of our spirit. So we were limited to the letter. We couldn't see beyond the letter. Because due to, due to sin, our spirit being in that state of sin, Satan took our spirit and conformed it to our humanity. Now, our spirit didn't become flesh. We were still spiritual. We just became like the flesh. We became carnal. All we could see was the flesh. All we could reason was the flesh. All we knew was the flesh. So we were limited to necessity. We were limited to our needs. So we went after the things of the world to meet our needs. And when we acquired those things, it gave us license. And we thought that license was liberty, but it's not liberty. It gave us license in the flesh. But true prosperity, it gives you liberty from the flesh. There's a difference between uh, liberty from the flesh and license in the flesh. You can have license under the law. But you can only have liberty from the law. So that's the high places. Okay, and then we have Ezekiel 18.4. He says, all souls are mine. All souls are mine. The soul of the, Ezekiel 18.4, all souls are mine. That's the soul of the father is mine and the soul of the son, of the son is mine. Now the soul is where the soul is the habitation of your spirit. The soul is the body of your spirit. So we must separate that in the first heaven, that's your spirit being in the light. The second heaven, that's your spirit being in the dark. Ezekiel 18.4, it's speaking of the soul. But the soul can only be redeemed through transformation of your born again spirit in the first heaven. It, it cannot be redeemed in the second heaven because you are spiritually unconscious. You know you have a soul, but you don't know you have a spirit. And you see, we didn't know anything about the spirit until we got the letter of Christ. This is what makes the letter of Christ. This is what makes the letter of Christ of God and good because it taught us that we, it showed us that we had a spirit, which without the Bible, we didn't even know we had a spirit. We knew we had a soul, but we didn't know we had a spirit. So the letter of the law is good if it's used lawfully. If it's used lawfully. Psalm 24, 1. The earth is the Lord's and the fullness thereof, the world and all they that dwell therein. That's the third dimension. That's the flesh. Every one of us in the flesh are born in the deadness of our sins and trespasses under the second heaven in the spirit. And there's no exception to that. Every one of us born in the flesh are born in the flesh under dead in our sins and trespasses under the law of sin and death in the second heaven in the spirit. We all have to be spiritually Reborn. We all have to be spiritually born back into the first heaven where the spiritual blessings are. Because under those curses, we're going to pursue religion and we're going to pursue the things of the world as the prosperity, as prosperity, because we can't separate biblical religion, the biblical religion of Christ from the life of Christ, which is the gospel. Being in the in that dead state in our spirit, we cannot separate the two. We cannot separate the two. Ephesians 2, 8, 9, and 10. 8. Ephesians 2, 8, 9, and 10. So we all must be born uh, from above. We all must be born again. Being born again is salvation. There is no salvation outside of being born again. 
Because once you're born again, you're in the person salvation. Okay, you're in the person salvation. All of us, before we were in Christ, we had the religion of Christ, which is the Bible. Everybody that was a true Christian, that's now a true Christian in Christ, which there are few, was a false Christian according to the letter before they were born of Christ. Because we associated Christianity with the Bible. Because that was the deception of sin working in our spirit. Using the, using the letter unlawfully. All right. So we all have to be born of the spirit. Being born of the spirit is, is salvation. Because when you're born again, you are in salvation. Salvation is a person. We have to go from the religion of Christ to the salvation of Christ, which is the gospel. Ephesians 2, 8, 9, and 10. 8 says that we are saved by grace through faith and that not of yourselves. That's pertaining to the flesh. Remember what faith was in the flesh. It was biblical. We are saved by grace through faith and that not of yourselves. It is the gift of God. We were not saved by biblical faith in the flesh. We were saved by the gifts of God in the spirit, which is the spirit of God. So anybody born again is back in the spiritual blessings. They're back in the first heaven. They are back in the first heaven. Galatians 5, 6. Because being born again, being born again is a work of faith, but not our faith, God's faith. And that faith is Christ Jesus. The faith of God is the spirit of God. This, this is why it says, uh, well, we are saved by grace through faith and that not of yourselves. <coughs> that not of yourselves it is the gift of God. Galatians 5, 6. For in Christ Jesus, neither circumcision avails anything nor uncircumcision, but faith, which works by love. Now, circumcision and uncircumcision is the keeping of the ordinances in the flesh those religious ordinances. But you see, now being in the gospel, in, in the dispensation of the gospel of the spirit, those ordinances are out the window. Nobody has to keep uh, uh, those ordinances anymore. What did Jesus tell his disciples when he walked with them in the flesh, when it came to the Lord's Supper? He says, as often as you do this, do it in, in remembrance of me until I come. Well, he was leaving in the spirit, but he was... He was leaving. He was leaving in the flesh, but he was coming back in the spirit. And once he would come back to them in the spirit, they would no longer have to take the Lord's Supper to remember Christ because the Lord's Supper was an ordinance in the flesh. They would now have the spirit of Christ. They would be in Christ. They would be in communion with Christ. They would be in fellowship with Christ by revelation of Christ. So they, they wouldn't have to keep that ordinance of the Lord's Supper anymore. That was to keep them in remembrance of Christ. He says, do this until I come. That's until he comes back in the spirit. You set free from all those ordinances. Now, if you want to take the Lord's Supper, that's your business. It's, it's nothing wrong with it, but it doesn't spiritually profit you anything. Those ordinances, those ordinances in the flesh, they don't profit you in the spirit. They don't bring you closer to God in the spirit. No act of the flesh can bring you closer to Christ in the, to God in the spirit. The only way to get to God the Father in the spirit is through Christ Jesus. That's the only way. Because the only way to get to Father God is through the spirit of God, which is Christ. <laughs> That's the only way. No acts in the flesh brings us closer to God in the spirit. Jesus said, I am the way. He didn't say the Bible was the way. He says, I am the way, the truth and the light. No one comes unto the Father but by me. So circumcision doesn't, circumcision profits nothing, neither uncircumcision, neither uncircumcision, but faith, which works by love. So being born again is a work of faith. But Faith works by love. That means it's also a work of love. Okay? It's a work of love. 
Romans 12, 3. It says, let no one think more highly of themselves than they ought to think because it says we have all been given the measure of faith. The measure of faith. Now, the me with the measure of faith comes the measure of love. With the measure of the faith of God comes the measure of the love of God, which is the Spirit of God, which is the Spirit of Christ. Galatians uh, 9, not of works, least any of us should boast. That's works of the flesh, not of works of the flesh, biblical works of the flesh, should any of us boast in the spirit. All right. Galatians 5.25 says, uh, let, wait, 9, oh, 1 Corinthians 1, 29 to 31. It's, it's talking about boasting in works of the flesh. This is what Ephesians 2.9 is talking about. Not of works, at least any of us should boast. Not of works of the flesh. Because salvation did not come by work of the by faith in the flesh. It came by the faith of Christ in the Spirit. 1 Corinthians 1, 29-31. 29. That no flesh can glory in his presence. No flesh can glory in his presence. Because the Lord does not accept works of the flesh. Now, he will eternally work through the flesh, but he will not accept a work of the flesh. It can't glory in his presence because it can't enter into his presence. 30. But of you who are in Christ Jesus, who is made unto us, all of us that are in him, wisdom, righteousness, sanctification, and redemption. 31. As it is written, if anyone glories, let him glory in the Lord. And to glory in the Lord is to glory in the Spirit. Well, that, that excludes the flesh. 10. For we are his workmanship, recreated in Christ Jesus on two good works, which God had before ordained that we should walk in them. Let me read 10 one more time. For we are his workmanship, recreated in Christ Jesus, that restored back to Christ Jesus, so that he can carry out those works through us. For we are his workmanship, recreated in Christ Jesus, who has, full, who has full ordained our works, that we should walk in them. Now, for those works are spiritual. And for us to walk in the Spirit, we have to be alive in the Spirit. Galatians 5.25 says, If we live in the Spirit, let us also walk in the Spirit. See, you can't walk in the Spirit unless you're alive in the Spirit. If we live in Christ, let us walk in the works of Christ, because those works have been foreordained for us. Ephesians 5, 8 and 9. Ephesians 5, 8 and 9. For you were sometimes darkness, but now are you light in the Lord. If you are in Christ, you are light. We were sometimes in darkness. We were in religious darkness. And many of us were in biblical darkness. But now are you light in the Lord? Look at what it says. Walk as the children of light. Walk as the children of light. Nine. For the fruit of the Spirit is in all goodness, righteousness, and truth, proving what is acceptable unto the Lord. Okay. So... We need to walk in in the walk in the spirit of light. We need to walk in the light that we're we're now alive in, and not conform back to the letter. Let that threefold work of Christ be carried out. And that brings us to the end of this teaching. I'll be back with you with part two and part three of the difference between the heavens, because this is important. We, we all have to know where we are spiritually so we can know where we got to go spiritually, where we have to be, so we can come out of those spiritual curses and get back in those spiritual blessings because Satan hides those curses well and he knows how to make cursed people look blessed so that you can be inspired by them and begin to follow them. All right. I love you and I thank you and I'll see you in the next teachings.